1988, the students of Gallaudet University were furious. The university board had chosen a new president of Gallaudet. Like every president before, this president was not deaf. They are going to be heard and started a revolution. The revolution would impact the deaf world and the hearing world as well. Gallaudet, a university for the deaf, historically only had hearing presidents. In 1988, the board chose another hearing president despite having two qualified deaf candidates. Deaf students protested to have a deaf president. This sparked other minority groups to stand up for their rights and led to the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet was the co-founder of the school that would become Gallaudet University. After communicating with a deaf girl named Alice, he came to believe that deaf people could learn and should be educated. The school was originally called the Columbia Institution for the Deaf and Dumb. Abraham Lincoln signed the law allowing Gallaudet to give college degrees in 1864. The school was renamed Gallaudet College in 1894 and became a university in 1986. For most of history, deafness was considered a disease or disorder that needed to be cured. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, believed deaf people should learn to speak and read lips. Bell's ideas influenced schools at the time. Many schools punished deaf children if they tried to use sign language. Deaf students were not allowed to use gesture or American Sign Language. Instead, they were expected to read lips. American Sign Language was not always recognized as a real language. Deaf students were told they would be better off trying to communicate in spoken English. Gallaudet, however, was a place that allowed deaf people to communicate with each other using sign language. At Gallaudet, deaf students were able to overcome stereotypes and limitations. They developed devices that let deaf people communicate over long distances. Even though deaf people were innovative and capable, the school had always had a hearing president. With each hearing president, it showed that there was a lack of trust in the capabilities of the deaf. Over time, it sent the message to the deaf students that they were not capable of leading. It was also a problem because deaf students could not easily communicate with the hearing president. The deaf students wanted a president who was deaf. They wanted someone who could understand them. When Dr. Jerry Lee retired, the students became resolved that they wanted the next president of Gallaudet to be deaf. Gary Olson. We need a president in this time and age who is sensitive, understanding, exemplifies, and advocates for the deaf, not just by rhetoric, but by being a living example. On March 1st, 1988, over a thousand deaf students and faculty demonstrated around campus for the board to pick a president who was like them. I want to talk about our first rally. A crowd of about one to 2,000 deaf people were screaming in support of a deaf president. There had never been one in 124 years. The Board of Trustees claimed they were acting in Gallaudet University's best interest, but many of the people didn't believe that and didn't trust them. I had been feeling positive and I was unprepared for the worst because I thought the board would act in the best interest of Gallaudet University. There were several more days of protest until the board announced the new president. The university board had narrowed the search down to three candidates. Dr. Elizabeth Zinzer, vice chancellor of the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and a hearing woman that did not know sign language. Dr. Harvey Corson, the superintendent of Louisiana School for the Deaf, and a deaf individual who knew sign language. And Dr. I.K. Jordan, the Dean of Gallaudet University's College of Arts and Sciences, and a deaf man who knew sign language. Neither of the deaf candidates were selected for the job. We picked Dr. Elizabeth Ann Zinzer as the seventh president of Gallaudet. No! It was because 
She is a, a very talented educator. The students were shocked and filled with anger. They felt that the board had overlooked them. It was like we'd been punched right in the face. We couldn't believe that Zinzer had been chosen as our seventh hearing president. The students marched down to the Mayflower Hotel where the board of trustees had been meeting. Tim Rarris and other representatives of the protesters got the chance to meet with Jane Spillman and the board. It was at this meeting that Spillman reportedly said Deaf people are not able to function in the hearing world. The next morning, the students blocked the entrance to the campus with cars that had deflated tires. The students gave the Board of Trustees their list of demands. Since there must resign and a deaf president be selected. Number two, Spillman must resign from the board. Number three, the percentage of deaf members on the Board of Trustees must be increased to 51%. And number four, there must be no reprisals against any of the protesters. The board denied the students four demands. We just met with the board, and they have refused to meet our demands. So shall we leave? The students left the building and marched to the Capitol, which was within a mile of the school. Student and faculty gave speeches on the importance of having a deaf president. The protests soon became national news. This evening, our person of the week. It is not very often we can say with much accuracy that a week has been a watershed, but this one has. This week, millions of us have had the chance to sit forward in our chairs and watch a group of young people as they break down some very out-of-date stereotypes. Deaf people are capable of anything except that they can't hear. Greg Leibach is president of the student government at Gallaudet University. He has been instrumental in bringing down a university president who is neither deaf nor able to speak sign language. He has also helped to raise the national consciousness about deaf people. It's become uh, a nationwide issue and a nationwide focus, and not only for deaf people, but for other people. With all this pressure, the board gave in and followed the four demands of the students. Dr. Zinzer resigned and Dr. I. King Jordan was appointed as the new president. The deaf community celebrated. Dr. I. King Jordan. The world has watched the deaf community come of age. Together, we've overcome our own reluctance to stand up for our own right. Other minority groups found inspiration in the DPN movement, and momentum was gained to stand up for equality. Reverend Jesse Jackson. It was a victory for all people who ever felt the pain of being stereotyped, devalued, and unrepresented. With the momentum from DPN, other groups joined together to demand access to the world and an opportunity to succeed. This ultimately led to the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. And now I sign legislation which takes a sledgehammer to another wall. One which has... <laughs> which has for too many generations separated Americans with disabilities from the freedom they could glimpse but not grasp. And once again we rejoice as this barrier falls, proclaiming together we will not accept, we will not excuse, we will not tolerate discrimination in America. The students of Gallaudet University took a stand for their rights and inspired others to do so as well.